Hi, I'm Adam from Ratings.com. Today, we'll be doing a review of the Sony HT-A5000. We'll be evaluating it on our standardized test bench to see how it performs and if you should buy it. The HT-A5000 is a soundbar from Sony's 2021 lineup. It's a 5.1.2 setup that's not quite as premium as the 2021 Sony HT-A7000, but still offers Sony's virtual surround engine and S-Force Pro Front surround technologies for an immersive sound. It's available as a standalone bar, but you can also add on external subwoofer and surround sound speakers. This review will focus on the standalone bar's performance though. First, let's check out the design. It has a pretty simple look with a solid texturized plastic and a metal grill covering the front of the bar. This bar has a 5.1.2 setup, as mentioned before. That means there are five channels, the left and right stereo channels, the center channel, and the left and right surrounds. There are also two subwoofers integrated into the bar, and they are located on the left and right of the center speaker. You can also see these two upfiring drivers, which are located beneath the metal grills on top of the bar. If you want to enhance the bar's bass reproduction, you can add on either the SASW3 or SASW5 subwoofers. It's also compatible with Sony's SARS-3S rear speakers. I know, it's a mouthful. Before we check out its sound, let's look at the inputs. This bar offers a lot of connectivity options. There's one HDMI in and one HDMI out port, as well as an optical connection. You can also plug in a USB drive to listen to music stored on the device itself. It's important to keep in mind that soundbars can sound different depending on the room they're in. For example, closed walls tend to result in more bass buildup. The bar has a feature that can correct for this though, and it's called sound field optimization. It uses a microphone built into the bar to analyze your room's unique acoustics, and it adjusts the bar's audio reproduction accordingly. Now, let's take a look at the tests. We'll start with how it sounds. The frequency response is a way of measuring the sound's performance across the auditory range. This graph shows 48 measurements in different positions, and the dotted line target result is great for a soundbar that most people consider neutral so voices won't be drowned out with too much boomy bass, for example. We conducted our frequency response measurements with sound field optimization turned on. Overall, the bar has a decent performance. It has a fairly neutral, though slightly U-shaped sound profile that adds a touch of extra boom in the high bass and some sparkle in the treble range. Vocals and lead instruments are clear and present in the mix, due to the balanced mid-range that you can see in the center of the graph. However, if you look down to the left side of the graph, you can see that the bar can't reproduce a lot of low bass on its own. As a result, you don't feel the thump and rumble in bass-heavy music genres like EDM and hip-hop. Bass lovers can still improve on its performance though, by purchasing a dedicated subwoofer from Sony separately. If you want to tweak the sound to your preference, unfortunately there aren't a lot of options available. The bar doesn't come with a bass and treble adjustment, and there's no graphic EQ either. Really, the only way to change a sound is its subwoofer level adjustment, which controls the volume of the sub. You can choose between three different settings, min, mid, and max. It's set to mid by default, which gives you the best result if you prefer a more neutral sound. Other sound enhancement features include Sony's sound field mode. When you turn it on, the bar's surround and Atmos drivers are activated. A good sound stage is important, since the human ear recognizes spatial cues when listening to audio. For an immersive sound, the bar needs to sound like properly placed studio speakers. When listening to music, the stereo soundstage is especially important. Its soundstage performance is decent. Like many soundbars, it uses psychoacoustic tricks to make it seem like sound is coming from an area that's wider than the bar itself. Sony calls it S-Force Pro Front Surround, and it works alright. But it doesn't have good focus. This means that instruments in an orchestra, for example, seem to come from a more general area rather than a pinpoint location. It's also important to note that the bar's soundstage changes noticeably when you turn sound field off. Without its surround and Atmos drivers activated, the soundstage is much narrower. The focus is a little better though. Good performance with the center channel is important when depicting objects or sounds from directly in front. For example, when watching movies, dialogue often comes through the center. This bar has an excellent center performance, so dialogue is reproduced clearly and accurately. The bar is also compatible with Sony's acoustic center sync feature. This lets you plug the bar into your compatible Sony Bravia TV, so you can use the TV speakers as a discrete center channel. It's not available if you don't have a Sony TV though. Since the bar already has discrete center, 
acoustic center sync isn't really necessary for listening to dialogue heavy content like TV shows. Now, if you want to use the soundbar for 5.1 content, like for movies or gaming, an immersive sound that feels like it's coming from all around you is important. Unfortunately, this soundbar surround performance is pretty disappointing on its own. Front firing drivers built into the bar are used to simulate surround objects in the sound stage, but this doesn't sound as clear or as real as a discrete localization. For example, in a chase scene, the sound of racing cars just seems to come from speakers placed in front of you. It's not quite as immersive as the performance offered by discrete surrounds, which would actually make it seem like cars were racing past you from a pinpoint location. That said, if you want to improve the surround performance, you can purchase the SARS-3S rear speakers from Sony separately. Now for content with height channels, such as when watching movies that have Atmos, the bar's performance is just okay. It has upfiring drivers that bounce sound off the ceiling and back down towards you to create the illusion of height. The sound reaches about the middle of the TV, but it doesn't extend any higher than that. As a result, some details are missing in movie scenes. Audio is reproduced clearly on these channels, but the result isn't quite as immersive as some of the more premium setups we've tested. This soundbar supports eARC. The E part of eARC means that it supports a higher bandwidth audio, so you can use it with object-based and lossless formats like Dolby Atmos and Dolby True HD. The bar supports all common surround sound formats, including Dolby Digital and DTS variants, so you get the best compatibility when watching movies over an ARC connection. Now, a low latency is important for synchronization between what you see on the screen and what you hear. It's important to note though that it can technically vary on a couple of factors, like for example, the specific input you're using. But we found these results to be well representative. Soundbars that have low latency tend to do a good job regardless of the signal passing through the input you're using. The result is mediocre though. Its latency is fairly high, so there's a bit of a delay between the audio you hear and the video you see on your screen. It's especially noticeable with lip syncing, like when you're watching dialogue heavy movies. This could be a deal breaker for some people. Some people like to connect devices directly to their soundbar and then pass through the signal to their TV. This soundbar comes with HDMI import that supports video pass-through up to 120Hz for gaming, and it also supports HDR10 pass-through. The bar's remote has a similar look to the other Sony remotes. It gives you access to lots of different features, including the different preset modes. If you prefer to use your phone to control the bar, the Sony Music Center app also acts as a remote. You can also use it to stream music from your mobile device. Once you've connected your bar to your TV, you'll have access to additional features. A menu appears on the screen displaying additional audio and video settings such as sound field optimization. There are also a couple of touch sensitive buttons on the top of the bar. You can use them to turn the bar on and off, to change the input, activate Bluetooth, access music services like Spotify, and change the volume. So this brings us to the main question, should you buy this soundbar? Or better yet, is the HT-A5000 a better value than Sony's HT-A7000? The short answer is no. The HT-A5000's performance isn't quite as impressive as the HT-A7000 overall. Its soundstage isn't as good, and it's not quite as well built. When it comes to the sound performance, there isn't a huge difference between the two setups. And given that the HT-A7000 is a 7.1.2, has better latency, and is only slightly more expensive than the HTA 5000, it is overall a better bang for your buck. The experience you'll have with the HTA 7000 is also better overall. That said, there are other premium standalone soundbars on the market that offer a better performance than either the HTA 5000 or the HTA 7000. The Bose Smart Soundbar 900 has a wide and immersive soundstage with better surround and Atmos performance and lower latency than the Sony. Same with the Sonos Arc. They're both a bit cheaper than the Sony too.